video, we are going to talk about EVP in hybrid IRB mode on Nexus 9000. This feature allows Nexus OS VTAPs operating in symmetric IRB mode to seamlessly interoperate with VTAPs running in a symmetric IRB mode within the same fabric. Let's begin with an overview of symmetric and asymmetric IRB modes. Symmetric IRB uses EVPN as a layer 2 and layer 3 overlay with distributed inter-subnet traffic routed at any VTAB, whether it's egress or ingress. As a result, ingress and egress VTABs perform both routing and bridging. Let's take an example here. So the traffic between host 2 to host 1, what happens at the ingress VTAB, the packet is bridged towards the default gateway and then route it into the destination perf on this VTAB. It's sent across the VXLAN tunnel. On the egress VTAB, after the packet is decapsulated, the packet is first routed and then bridged into the destination endpoint. In a sense, all packet forwarding for this inter-subnet traffic is distributed across the VTABs. This model allows layer two and layer three constructs to be configured only where you have the host. As a result, our neighbor discovery is local to where the endpoint is attached. So to do a recap for inter-subnet traffic with IPverf plus L3VNI, we use the bridge route route bridge approach. Symmetric VNI is configured in the same manner for traffic in both directions. The hardware adjacency is programmed for remote VTAP and perf. And this mode gives you an option to do flexible configuration because you decide which VTAP you have to configure the layer 2 layer 3 constructs on. Now let's talk about asymmetric IRB. With asymmetric IRB, the ingress VTAPs performs both layer 2 bridging and layer 3 routing lookup, whereas the egress VTAP performs only the layer 2 bridging lookup. So when a packet traverses between two VNIs, the ingress VTAP routes the packet from the source VNI to the destination VNI, and the egress VTAP bridges the packet to the destination point within the same destination VNI. So let's look at an example here traffic from host 1 to host 2. Asymmetric IRB uses EVPN purely as layer 2 overlay. In this case, ingress VTAP performs both routing and bridging and egress VTAP performs only bridging. In this case here, on the ingress VTAP, packet is bridged towards the default gateway and then routed into the local subnet and then sent across the VXLAN fabric. Post decapsulation here, this packet is simply bridged to the destination endpoint. Now, there is no routed construct here. The routes are still programmed using IP adjacencies, but every VTAP must maintain the MAC, addresses, MAC address table for all VNIs. As a result, ARP or neighbor discovery is populated across the fabric and the configuration for the layer 2 and layer 3 construct is consistent across the fabric. So let's do a quick recap. With the inter-subnet forwarding, if we follow bridge route, bridge approach, different VNIs depending on the direction of the traffic are used. The adjacencies for a remote VTAP WERF and endpoints are programmed in the hardware and the routing table and throughout the fabric each VTAP has consistent configuration. Now that we've talked about symmetric and asymmetric IRB, next we will talk about the integration which we do through hybrid IRB mode. Nexus OS VTAPs which are enabled with IRB mode continue to operate in symmetric IRB mode, which is the more scalable mode 
so in this diagram i have multiple v taps so v tap one is a hybrid v tap two and three are symmetric v taps and four and five are asymmetric v taps while control plane and data plane that is needed is identical but there are some constraints to what kind of traffic can actually work between the different kind of irb boards so to summarize the intra subnet approach is same so any traffic which is in the same within the same subnet between the symmetric and asymmetric vtaps work but the inter subnet has requires a very different approach in each mode and hence it, it's not possible so with the hybrid irb mode what we are doing is we are using the existing symmetric irb vtaps and then integrating them for the asymmetric vtaps some of the requirements for the hybrid mode are that all symmetric irb modes within the fabric must have hybrid mode enabled when they are interoperating with asymmetric vtaps and the symmetric vtaps must be provisioned with all subnets in an ip wrf that are stretched to asymmetric vtaps in the fabric let's look at control and data plane for the hybrid mode so the main difference that lies is in how the evpn route type 2 or the mac ip routes are advertised in a symmetric irb vtap type 2 route is advertised with the ip wrf and layer 3 vni information in an asymmetric irb vtap the type 2 route is advertised with the mac wrf and l2 vni information how this integrates with hybrid irb mode is for a symmetric irb vtap type 2 route would still be learned through l3 vni plus ip wrf but for a symmetric vtap the routes would be learned via l3 adjacencies or host routes in the ip wrf and that's why in the previous slide we were talking about that all symmetric vtaps should also be configured with the l3 adjacencies for the ip wrf so as we discussed by default the hybrid vtaps are uh, run in symmetric mode so the vtaps continue to follow the symmetric routing path with other hybrid vtaps in both the directions but with the asymmetric vtaps the traffic is bridged and then routed in the ip wrf with the host mac rewrite so when the packet actually reaches the egress vtap if the mac address is is not local there is a mac rewrite that would be done and then the packet would be simply bridged on the egress vtap supported features with uh, hybrid mode are ipv4 and ipv6 endpoints host mobility and ingress replication and multicast under layer supported they can coexist but not for the same vlan a distributed anycast gateway and vpc vtaps are also supported hybrid mode is not supported on the dci border gateway and for the hybrid mode svi you have to configure the same mac and ip as any other distributed anycast gateway within the fabric so here's a snippet of a configuration we have a vni l2 vni configured and then there is a svi configured for the hybrid mode so fabric forwarding mode anycast gateway and then the hybrid mode is used along with this and this enables the hybrid mode Uh, so that was all about the feature please feel free to find more details on the vx lan configuration guide for the release 10.21 thank you